Today I've got some new goodies, which we're going to have lots of fun with this evening. If you've been following my recent videos, you'll see that I've been doing stuff with the ESP, uh, the ESP8266 or the Node MCU board, and the LED strip. So what I've done this time is I've bought myself an LED panel. So that is an 8x8 LED panel. And those LEDs are NeoPixel LEDs, uh, WS2812. And what that means is you can control them with a single pin from a microcontroller. So from either an Arduino or an ESP. Uh, you could probably also do it from a Raspberry Pi. And they are exactly the same protocol as the strips that were seen in my last video. So I'm hoping that later today I'm going to have this showing various pictures, maybe even some simple animations, and uh, in many different colours. Now it's quite bright and it's daylight now and I'm sure we'll have the most fun with this when it's darker. So first thing I'm going to need to do with this uh, is to solder it. Um, so I'm just going to open it up and apparently this brand, although they're NeoPixel brands and they're all fairly similar, um, it's Rainbow Matrix. Let's get a closer look into that. Rainbow Matrix. Um, sorry about the noise, I've got my soldering fan on, so the soldering iron, I'm getting it warmed up and ready. So there you go, it's a Rainbow Atrix, and it's Nolson branded. And on the back, you've got some small writing at the bottom here that says NSLED03, and at the, in the top corner here, you've got your 5 volts data in and ground, and at the bottom, you've got ground data out and 5 volts. So this is your input, and this is where you can daisy chain it across to other devices. So you could have a bunch of these linked up, you know, one, two, three, so you can make for larger displays with them. And I'm going to go and put some connectors on the input side up here. Um, I'll worry about doing the daisy chain output when I've got another one of these panels, uh, which might be soon. So let's uh, let's see. Um, what I'm planning on doing, so actually connecting it so the connectors come out of the back, so the forward is left free apart from a few uh, solder marks. So first I will push this through here, get that nice and flat. And then I'm going to be a bit cheeky and use a dab of blue tack. I'm sure I've got some here somewhere, just to hold that in place. Um, just because I don't want this moving around and getting out of line while I'm soldering it. Um, let's just get that dab in there. And of course this blue tack doesn't want to stick to the board. Right, there we go. Right, we're, we're in there. Okay. Now I'm going to have to take a little bit of care, I don't know, I mean I suppose these have been through a surface mount oven, um, but I don't know what the thermal profile of these LEDs is. I don't really want to heat up one of the LED cases. So this is going to be a bit of a tricky job, um, because I'm soldering it in this inverted location. Um, I, if I solder it coming out at the top, I, I don't want the cables to then, they'll foul the actual visibility of the LEDs, so that won't be very good. So this is going to be tricky, but I think it'll pay off. So let's see if the soldering iron is hot enough. And I've got my tin tipper here. Yep, okay. Let's give myself a length of solder. Just something to cut off a bit of solder with. Probably far more than I need, but it'll enough. Yeah, that's the first connection made. Let's 
second connection. Oop. Third connection. Okay. That was nice and easy. Next thing is to go and connect this up to some of the uh, to, to one of my ESP eight two sixes flashed with the Node MCU software. Um, I'm going to connect this straight up to the D one pin again. Um, it's still probably going to need an external five volts because, as we found, the uh, the V in here doesn't provide enough for it to work. So I'm going to find another way to do that. It's, it's a shame, really, because it'd be nice if that did just reflect directly what was coming off of USB. Uh, maybe. I could solder some kind of bodge wire to make that happen. And then uh, we'll see what we can do with it, see if we can get it to light up today. So we've got a moment of truth coming on here. Um, I've got a pair of crock clips with four and a half volts on them, and we'll see if we can get this thing to light up. So there might be a little bit of activity while I connect it. So I've got to connect uh, the black ground and red voltage. Let's not get myself into a twist. Right, and there was a flicker there, so it's obviously alive. So I'll start by trying something basic, and let's just send, uh, make everything white, and see if that works. Right. We've got all the LEDs, we have got all the LEDs, and that's a fairly bright setup. Okay, um, let's turn them all off again. And what I'm doing here, um, as I mentioned in the last video where I was doing the light strip, uh, is I'm using the Explorer software where I've kind of pre-canned a bunch of code uh, based on what I did with the light strip, but now using 64 LEDs instead of just 29. Um, and you can tell it to run blocks of code directly by selecting them and hitting the run button. So we can try a bunch of different colors. Let's try, I don't know, blue we've got blue let's try mixing color so we can do a purple maybe we've got a purple okay right I'll tell you what let's be interesting and we'll grab a bunch of colors and again I'm using the node MCU so this is all Lua based and I'll make sure I put the code onto github along with the other uh, code for the uh, ESP and the WS28812 chips and let's see if we can do a rainbow. So what I'll need to do is take a bunch of colours, um, concatenate them into a line and then repeat the line eight times. Um, I prepared some earlier and we should have a rainbow. So this thing is kind of, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I love the way this thing looks. Um, we can also start to consider doing some shapes. So if I do, for example, maybe some stripes, get some coloured stripes. I suppose it's not unlike the rainbow, but the other way up. Um, and because they're individually individual pixels, we might even be able to do some shapes here. Now, I've got to do a H, because the H is for Helena, the lab assistant. She's sometimes around, she's not on this video today. Um, so what else can I get to do? Oh, maybe even a little J-O for John. No, no, that didn't quite work. Okay, <laughs> what have I got wrong there? So that's actually where I tried to do something interesting. Um, let me just switch that. Ah, there we go. It's upside down. There we go, there's a little J-O. So what I tried to do just now is when you send data to this, you send data as a string. And the string in Lua has a G sub command, which can substitute one string for another. So I was substituting all the black strings, which are the byte 000, for all purple. Now the thing is, the way these work is you send three numbers for each of these LEDs, a red, a green and a blue number. And so you just send a string of them. So the first LED will take three and pass everything along. The next LED will take the next three and pass them all along. That means if one of the numbers 
One of these LEDs has numbers that end with two zeros, and it's red, green, blue. So if anything's red, then there's more zeros afterwards. If there's enough for three zeros, that string replace will find all of those. So although I'm telling it to string replace something I've defined as black with something I've defined as purple or green or blue, it'll actually replace any set of three zeros with those and very fast get out of sync. So if I try substituting the black colors for green, you get this strange effect. And the first black color, which was the background, did go green as expected. The next one, however, instead of going white, has gone to this lovely purple colour. Um, it's started to get kind of slightly strange. And what's actually happening is, is any sets of three zeros are being substituted. And if the first set of three zeros is substituted, then if there are two remaining, which there might be for this row, they won't be. Um, it, so this is why it's ended up doing something odd. So the other thing we can do is we can take some of the functions that we wrote or some of the code that I wrote for the, uh, the light strip and run those here. So using the timers and alarms, we should be able to get this to pulsate. And that's only saying 29, which is what we had with the strip from last video. So if I tell it actually we've got 64, we should see them all pulsating. Um, and we can also do the uh, the light chasing thing, thing we had uh, going. It'll look a bit different on this um, right now. As I'm uploading this, it's changing the timers. So this is running the same code that we ran in the other video on the strip. Uh, it looks a bit different on a panel. Um, but I mean, as you can see already, uh, we've got animations, we've got characters. Um, Perhaps I can pursue it further and put some a game on this. I don't know. I was thinking to put a variable resistor on the uh, analog input here so I can maybe even play a game of Pong. Um, I'd love to hear reader ideas or viewer ideas on what to do with this next. Uh, it might make for a rather nice record system. So if I'm recording, there could be a message on here to show I'm recording, like a big red circle or a play button. Um, and I'm certainly going to try and figure out how to do scrolly text on it as well. All the code will be on GitHub and I'll put some of the simple circuit diagrams to go with that. Thank you very much.